Hey there, welcome to the start of my 24 hour reading vlog. It's now 12.30 on Sunday, June the 21st, which means that National Indigenous Peoples Day has officially started here in Canada. And I thought it would be a fun way to celebrate this day while also making great progress with my 30 books in 30 days reading challenge by having a 24 hour readathon today, really trying to maximize my time, get some reading done, do some thinking, do some learning, spend some time outside. I think it's going to be a good day. I'm also celebrating a few other things this weekend. I just got back tonight from having a socially distanced get together with my family for midsummer. So you know we're celebrating summer solstice this weekend. And also I just finished with my report cards and my grading. So I'm kind of wrapped up another school year. That is always just like a really nice freeing, exciting feeling being done with work for a few months. So I'm just very excited and really looking forward to getting some good reading done today. I am planning on giving myself a few breaks where I can get some sleep. I think the last time that I tried to do this, I tried to stay awake for the whole 24 hours and I felt like I really wasn't enjoying it by the final eight hours. So I will give myself a few nap breaks, but I will try to maximize the reading time. There are a lot of books that I plan on reading throughout the day, but I think I want to kick things off tonight with Midnight Sweat Lodge by Wabgashig Rice. And this one just seems very fitting because, you know, it has midnight in the title and it's currently that magical time of night. And also this is a slim novella. It's under 100 pages. So I'm hoping this could be a nice one sitting read so that I can get my first book of the readathon done, feeling good before I go to bed tonight. So I will let you know how this goes once I've finished reading. So I just finished reading Midnight Sweat Lodge. It's now 2 a.m. And this book was pretty much what I was expecting to be. It was an excellent one sitting read. And most of the book takes place inside the sweat lodge and people are sharing some deeply personal stories in the hopes that they can have a healing experience. But what I didn't expect is that the final quarter of this book actually takes place out of the sweat lodge and it's from the perspective of a character who really did not appreciate the experience of going. He's not someone who really appreciates older traditions or spirituality but then he has a very strange encounter and I liked how the ending got pretty mystical and like very high stakes in terms of like the potential end of the world so the ending definitely went beyond what I thought the story was going to be, so that was kind of a cool twist. As for what I want to read next, it's only 2 a.m., but I'm already starting to get really tired. Today was kind of a long day, so I think I'm going to retreat to the bathtub, and I'm going to take a new novel with me. This is Keeper and Me. I've been excited about reading this book all month, and I've been saving it especially for today, so I might start this one. And then I think I'll also take Shapes of Native Nonfiction in with me. This is an essay anthology that has been incredible so far, and I've only got three essays left, and one of them is an essay I've read before. So I'm very sad that this journey is going to come to an end, but excited to continue reading it tonight. So hopefully we will see each other again soon in the morning. I'm planning to wake up for the sunrise. Whether it will actually happen or not remains to be seen. I am not a great morning person, but yeah, hopefully we'll catch up again soon. Taking tea on the road today.
Good morning, it's now 6 a.m. on Sunday. I started off my day with a walk to the pond that I live nearby, and I've never been here this early in the day, and it is beautiful. The sun is up, the birds are out, and I have seen no people so far. So I'm going to set up on a park bench, I'm going to drink my morning tea, and I'm gonna start with some reading for the day. Hey there, so I'm now back from my morning walk. I also spent some time reading in bed and catnapping. So I'm now running on three hours of sleep and I'm feeling pretty good about it. My walk this morning was absolutely gorgeous and I feel like it has kind of made me want to become more of a morning person because the weather is just so nice at that early hour. The air feels fresher. There's this cool, lovely breeze outside. It was a wonderful experience. And I took five books out with me while I was walking around my neighborhood park. So the first one that I started my day with was Indian Coping Mechanisms, Notes from the Field by Billy Ray Belcourt. I'm about halfway through this collection now. It's a quick read, but each of these poems is quite heavy hitting. Belcourt writes so beautifully about the body, but yet there's a lot of sadness and heaviness in these poems, and he's also challenging a lot of Canadian norms, so I'm really enjoying this so far. Then I checked out the first chapter of The Truth About Stories by Thomas King. Basically, he is analyzing the power of story from an Indigenous perspective. In the first chapter of this book, he starts off by analyzing creation myths as basically a foundational story that people tell themselves to kind of reinforce their beliefs and to determine their own cultural values. So he shares the Anishinaabe story about Sky Woman and dancing on the back of the turtle. His retelling of this creation myth is pretty funny and casual, so then he juxtaposes that with a more like straight up traditional retelling of the Adam and Eve myth. And then he just shows you how you can see two different worldviews present in these myths. This is also something that came up in Braiding Sweetgrass. She also compares these two creation stories and she asks the question about how Western society might have had a different relationship with the land if the Christian religion didn't present humans as being exiles on earth because you know Adam and Eve are kind of kicked out from the garden and earth is not really viewed as your real home. You're kind of trying to work through this stage so that you can get to your true spiritual home after you die, but earth's just not valued as a very important place, whereas you contrast that with the Sky Woman creation story where instead of being cast out of the garden, she is actively creating the garden. She's building the paradise. She is making those relationships and keeping everything in balance. So. Both of these works have made me really think about those foundational myths. And then also on my walk, I was reading more of Keeper and Me by Richard Wagamez. And I started this one last night in the bathtub and it's so good already. I'm about 100 pages in right now. And I knew going into this one that it was about a boy who was taken from his family at a young age and raised in foster care. I really thought that more of the book would be exploring his time in foster care, but actually he grows up quite quickly. But rather, it's more about him connecting with his family once again and moving back to his reserve and starting to build this deeper cultural connection. And I think through the process of this, he's going to find himself. So it's been really beautiful so far. I was also able to finish the memoir Natisanek by Lindsay Nixon, and this was a really outstanding work. It doesn't read like any kind of memoir that I've read before. You know, it's kind of partly Lindsay telling you their life story, but also it has so many wonderful words of wisdom and encouragement, especially for people who may identify as Indigenous or Two-Spirit or queer. Um, there are so many wonderful ideas shared in this book, and there's just so much love throughout this whole memoir, so I thought this was a really cool read. Read. and I'm sad that it's over because I could read a lot more Lindsay Nixon. And then finally while I was out I read a few stories from The Stone Collection by Kateri Akawenzi Dam. I'm so impressed with these stories how a lot of them are very short like around five pages but she's always able to build this really rich character depiction and you get drawn into the stories quite quickly so I always enjoy my time reading these stories. So that's it for all the stuff that I read this morning. I'm going to go make breakfast and then head outside on my balcony. 
it actually looks like there's going to be quite a bit of rain tonight in the evening so I'm just hoping that I can spend as much time as possible outside reading in the sunshine. Time for my second round of tea today. We're gonna mix things up with a peaches and cream white tea. And one of my favorite reading mugs. So I just finished reading Braiding Sweetgrass and I had a really cool moment because the final chapter of this book is all about berries and what we can learn about generosity and reciprocity from berries. And then I looked in my backyard and I noticed that we have some wild strawberries that are starting to appear in our lawn here. So it's really exciting to find these berries. I feel like it connects beautifully with the teachings from Braiding Sweetgrass, and it's great to have this reminder of building a better relationship with the land in my own backyard. Hello again, it's now seven o'clock and I'm on my third cup of tea for the readathon. I'm having a delightful s'mores chai blend tonight. Um, and I'm also still outside on my balcony. I keep checking the forecast and it keeps telling me that it's going to rain, but the rain never happens and it keeps getting pushed back farther in the day. So I think I'm going to get to keep chilling out here. I might go for one more walk tonight before the sun sets. But for a quick reading update, I have finished two books since we spoke last. I finished Indian Coping Mechanisms by Billy Ray Belcourt. I think I definitely preferred the poems in the first half of this collection. It gets pretty theoretical in the second half. I kind of found that the poems in the section were pretty heavy on the academic jargon, which isn't really my favorite thing. But overall, this is still a really wonderful collection. He's such a talented writer. And then I was also able to finish Wendy, Master of Art by Walter Scott. This was another awesome installment in the series. Walter Scott does a great job of developing the characters in each volume of the series. I feel like while Wendy is still the chaotic party girl that we met in the first volume, she is definitely developing, she's growing, she's becoming more thoughtful. There's still a lot of self-doubt, but it is very fascinating watching her journey and also very funny. My favorite thing about these comics are the ridiculous faces that the characters make, especially when they're in different states of inebriation. But yeah, this one was a lot of fun, especially when you get to meet these students in her grad school program. I thought those characters were so much fun to follow around. And also, this volume has a little bit of a romance going on. So yeah, another classic installment of Wendy. And then I haven't finished uh, Keeper and Me yet, but I've made some very good progress. I think I only have 85 pages of this left, so it is definitely within the realm of possibility that I can finish this tonight. I've got about another five hours of reading left to do before my 24 hours ends, so I will let you know what I think about this one when I finish it. But I will say at this point I am really appreciating Wagamiz's sense of humor. It's really keeping the story going. So. Even though the story itself is quite deep and philosophical, there are just a lot of funny incidents happening on the res to keep you wanting to turn the pages, so I'm really enjoying this so far. Hey, it's time for another update. It is now 10 o'clock, and we are in the home stretch of the readathon, but my three hours of sleep is really starting to catch up with me. <laughs> but I'm pretty determined to finish. So I would like to finish Keeper and Me tonight. I've got 70 pages, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I wanted to read more of The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee today, but this book, I have a bit of a track record with it in that it does tend to put me to sleep <laughs> when I read this book at night. So I think out of self-preservation for my readathon, I should probably stay away from this one, except maybe at the end of my 24 hours. So once I finish Keeper and Me, I'm not really sure what direction I'm going to go. I could either start reading a play by Thompson Highway, maybe reading some drama out loud will be a fun way to stay awake. Or I could do another lecture from The Truth About Stories by Thomas King. So we'll see uh, what I end up choosing. But that's what it looks like. Hopefully I will update you again at midnight when we have reached the end of this 24-hour cycle. There are those who believe that the root of our Aboriginal belief lies in the realm of magic and mysticism. Keeper in Me shows that these roots are the gentler qualities of respect, honor, kindness, sharing, 
and much, much love. These are the Indians that I have met, known, and shared with. It's 12.30, I've reached the end of my 24 hour readathon. I am exhausted, so I'm going to go to bed and get a full night's sleep, and we'll catch up again tomorrow and talk about everything that I finished reading. Good morning, it's now Monday, and I wanted to wrap up my 24 hour readathon. I've just been doing my calculations on a very fancy receipt slip, um, but I think I hit a new personal best yesterday in that I read 1,029 pages in the course of 24 hours. And it sounds like a high number. I think part of the reason the number is so high is that 270 of the pages were from Wendy, which is a comic and is obviously a lot quicker to read than a full page of text. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how much I was able to read yesterday. I had four books that I read in their entirety. They also seem to have blue in common with each other. So I started off with Midnight Sweat Lodge, by Wabgashig Rice, which I got to read around midnight, which was very fitting. And then I read Indian Coping Mechanisms by Billy Ray Belcourt throughout the day, but I particularly loved starting this collection just after the sun had risen sitting in the park. And then I also really enjoyed reading Wendy, Master of Art. This one just kept me laughing and kept me happy throughout my 24-hour readathon. So I'm super glad that I picked this one up. And then throughout the whole 24 hours, I kept returning to Keeper in Me by Richard Wagamez. And it doesn't feel like I read this whole thing in a day. Like, I feel like I have been going on this journey with Garnet Raven for a really long time. So it's kind of weird <laughs> how quickly I guess I took in this story. I got quite emotional finishing this one last Last night because I felt very bonded to Garnet as a character and I realized that this book also made me challenge my expectations for the kind of story that I was maybe expecting to see. I definitely thought that more terrible heartbreaking things were gonna happen maybe because that's been a pattern in narratives that have to do with colonization. You expect that there are going to be these violent events at the heart of the story and really this one isn't about that. It is so much about reclaiming culture, practicing and learning and and just becoming a better human and it was just so beautiful getting to go on that journey along with Garnet so once again Richard Wagamez has like blown me away and then I also have a few books that I finished yesterday but it kind of counts as cheating because I was already very close to finishing them <laughs> and that was the memoir Natisanak by Lindsay Nixon which is incredible and another <laughs> breathtaking read <laughs> Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, which I'm very sad to have finished this book because I loved my daily meditations reading this book. And then there were also a few books, I won't go through all of them because <laughs> there are a lot, um, but these were all books that I didn't finish but I made some decent progress with. So you'll hear more about these ones once I finish them in my end of the month wrap up. So those are all the books that I read. That's really how I wanted to spend National Indigenous Peoples Day, just taking the time to listen to Indigenous voices, to learn more, and to reflect on my own role as a settler living in Canada. So I had a great time doing that. So with that said, I think we've reached the end of my 24-hour reading vlog. Please let me know if you are living in Canada and if you did anything to celebrate National Indigenous Peoples Day. I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, thanks for checking out this video. We're getting close to the end of the month, so I will definitely have a wrap-up coming up soon, letting you know about my full 30 books in 30 days project. But yeah, that's it for today, and I'll see you again later. Bye.